If asked in interview, do you know how many types of isolation cells are there in a commercial standard cell library? Do you know why an isolation cell is bare necessary in a chip with multiple power domains? Do you know how the isolation cell is associated with power aware RTL verification? Let's start our journey to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back to the computer screen and in this episode, we are going to discuss about the below points, various power management methods, problem scenario among power domains, isolation cell to the rescue, isolation method and isolation cells, isolation standard cell example, drawbacks and improvements. And finally, we will summarize our entire discussion. So that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Power Management Methods In modern day ICs, the power management inside a chip is done through several different ways and here in this slide, we are depicting all of them. The first one of the power management method is to use multiple threshold voltages that is multiple VTs and we use multiple VDDs for multiple power domains inside a single chip. We use power getting method for managing the power to different blocks inside a same chip to PMU or power management unit. Also, we use clock getting for the clock cells. We also use dynamic voltage scaling. In addition, we use dynamic frequency scaling too. From the standard cell families, we use the retention flop or cell and isolation cell and power switch cell and level shifter cell. So these are four special standard cells that we use for power management. So here the entire picture is clear to you now. So let's move on to the next slide. Problem scenario among power domains. Inter-domain signals can become complicated if the connecting interface changes during different power modes. Here is a very short and sweet example of multiple power domains. This one is a power domain one that is PD1 with VDD1. Here it is depicted as a digital block. Here it is PD2 with VDD2 and it's an analog block. PD3 with VDD3 for macro. And here is our power management unit that is power management block that manages the power among all these independent power domains. So power domain one is independent of two and two is independent of three and mutually they are independent of each other. These blocks may communicate among them during the normal course operation of the entire chip and these signals become complicated when the chip is in action. Let us see what happens. During power getting operation, the circuit will contain few on domains and few off domains together at any point of time. So here in this particular picture, you can see, right, this block is on, the digital block is on and the macro block is off and the analog block is on. So at some point, these two are on, this is off. As I have said that these blocks are interconnected, what can happen? Let us see. In such situation, output of an off domain sends an invalid signal to the on domain. And this is a scenario what happens. So this is a power gated block. So imagine any of these blocks as this block, which is a power gated block and another one is the active block. So this is the signal transmission line here. And here we see there is no isolation. And if there is no isolation, the line, if it is off, right, then this line, the signal line will contain floating output. So it could be one, it could be zero, could be in between. So no one knows what is there. It is in a metastable state. So the active blocks receive an invalid signal here. When this floating voltage is propagated to the inputs of the receiving end, a short circuit current is produced. Rover current may flow because output pins the off domain might be in the metastable state or dangling. So this is another risk. There can be a crowbar current and that can confuse the active block of about the signal that is coming from the power gated block, which is off at particular time. And that time the active block may get confused about the coming signal. So the scenario is well explained with the infographics and text. So let's move on to the next slide isolation cell to the rescue. So this situation which we have just explained, how to overcome that situation. Here in this slide, we will discuss about that. To deal with such problematic situations, specially designed standard cell also known as isolation cell is placed in between power gated block and the active block. 
so here is our problematic situation you can see the power gated block and our signal line is carrying a floating value and here is our active block there is no isolation and in this situation what we do we insert the isolation cell here i have shown the block diagram and when we insert isolation cell the power gated block whatever the output of the power gated block which is off goes to the isolation cell and by the operation and the, by the virtue of the operation of isolation cell this one is constant so here this this line will contain constant so it will not be floating as the input this is the beauty of the isolation cell and this is how we solve our problematic situation as shown in this infographics with this insertion of the isolation cell an isolation cell clamps the signal at its input pin to a defined known state either 0 or 1 hence transmission of invalid signal is eradicated Controllers are used to control and synchronize local power switches and isolation cells with clock gating or power gating signals. So this is another good terminology. Remember there will be controllers to control and synchronize local power switches and isolation cells. So this is another circuit component there. And two types of controllers are used in VLSI. Simple adaptive controller and enhanced adaptive controller. We will not go in very much detail because today our discussion is on the isolation cell not on the controller. So here in this slide we have explained how isolation cell that is a special standard cell tackle the situation of the floating line going from a power gated block into an active block. So we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide isolation method and isolation cells when power gating method is applied to our design in particular mode of operation we might end up few on domains and few off domains so this is a cluster of on domains and a cluster of off domains they were interacting before this particular time when the off domains became really off before that they were on if the outputs of the shutdown domain are connected to the active part of the design then it might lead to invalid signal transmission and a crowbar current as a result as we have discussed already to avoid this an isolation cell is placed on the output nets of the switched off domain interacting with the active portion of the design so now here we are taking the broader aspect we are placing one isolation cell for each of the instance single instance that we have just discussed in the previous slide so here is our schematic of uh, isolation cell or you can call it as a block diagram so here you can see our power gated block and always on block this might be another scenario always on blocks are also there and here that means if this block never goes off and this block can go on or off and here in between we insert the isolation cell i have used the and however there could be two different type of isolation cell based on the architecture one is the or type another one is the and type so here you can see input will be data and isolate bar and here is the isolated signal for a or type cell and for a n type cell this is data and isolate and the isolated signal is here so this is a simple explanation of the two types of the isolation cell generally found in the standard cell package any commercial standard cell package can have both of them so or and and later we'll have some examples so we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide detection of missing isolators the isolation and level shifter strategies are defined at RTL stage itself if the UPF and CPF file. Power management block. This one is digital block, power domain 2, that is analog block with VDD2 and macro with power domain 3 and VDD3. So all these things is designed by the power aware RTL that is with the UPF or the CPF description. In UPF or CPF, if a isolation and or a level shifter strategy is to be defined between power nets connected to source and sync domains, unable to do so the resulting in malfunctioning of the design. So if we have missed out any insertion of the isolation cell where it is needed, then this situation might lead to a malfunction of the chip while the chip is in operation. Such scenarios are detected by the standard EDA tools and an error is flagged. So there we have methodologies to detect if any isolators is missing where it should be there. Then the error is flagged by the EDA tool. We are done with this particular slide and let's move on to the next slide. Isolation standard cell example. This one represents the OR type isolation cell comes under the standard cell package. And this represents ant type isolation cell that comes under standard cell package. 
So first one you may see with a name like this ISO L O R X. So here if you see right the ISO L or the ISO represents the isolation cell and O R here inside the name ISOL or ISO okay, this is represent to the isolation and O R or means it is odd type and X1 is the drive strength. So in the standard cell package if you browse further right either in the documentation or in the actual standard cell physical library you may find other other isolation cell of the odd type with different drive strength like this one and this one and for the n type cell you can see that the name is iso or iso l and a n d and is there for the n type and drive strength is one so if you browse through the physical standard cell library or the documentation of the standard cell library you might find the different isolation cell with different drive strength as maybe with uh, this one or this one so depending upon the design the standard cell library may contain various drive strength so don't stick to these names only or this drive strength only in actual scenario go to your documentation or the physical library there you will find different and or or type isolation cell with different drive strengths so we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide drawbacks and improvements here in this slide we talk about our isolation cell drawbacks and some improvements that we have made already to deal with the drawbacks or backlogs of the isolation standard cells isolation cell need to be inserted at the interface of different power domains and here in this picture you can see that here power domain x and here with the dotted lines we have separated the three different power domains here is power domain y pdy and pdz okay and here is the isolation cell is inserted in the boundary we also see the level shifter cell uh, this is just for your information right now we are focusing on the isolation cell so there could be different power domains where such isolation cell has to be placed in the boundary that means the interface of different power domains we call it interface because two power domains are physically neighbors this adds significant area and power overhead the and or or isolation cells require more area to lower the area overhead the isolation cells use in most pull down transistor using high vt transistor further lowers leakage current caused by the inactive isolation cells so here we deal with the power of the shortcomings from the isolation cell design with high vt transistor so we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next Summary. Let us summarize whatever we have learned so far in this episode. Conventional techniques are applied to perform electrical checks for voltage crossing domains and power islands. Voltage level shifter, electrical isolation cell, retention cell, etc. The special standard cells are applied in through power aware RTL using PPF or UPF language. Isolation cells, abbreviated as ISO, also this used in the standard cell nomenclature, enable electrically safe power shutdown states from affecting powered on regions by fencing off the propagation of non deterministic logic states. Two types of standard cell isolators are used OR and AND types. So here we have summarized our entire discussion in four bullets. We are done here with this particular slide. So let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. In case you have some dislikes, put that in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.